All right, so Navarro Plaza, we'll go over that. It's basic big box on the bottom. It's uh, single-sided down here with uh, slide-in faces on this side. And then the top part has reverse channel letters on both sides. So we'll go over the layout of the parts. You got It's a single post. You've got a mounting plate. You've got your power box. You've got all the bottom cabinet parts. You've got the top cabinet parts. Uh, you've got your skins. Let's see. You've got your white on white 040. Those will be the light trays. Slide-in faces and reverse channel letter faces and 3 8 macrolon backers we're not doing tabs on these because they're so small all right so there's all our parts um, so you can build build both boxes separately go ahead and get them framed up so you have your you have your middle frame pieces that go here and then you'll have your c channel pieces that'll go across the face that way it keeps the whole this all this part is all open so you can do all your wiring and you have room for all your LED trays. So yeah, these guys go across there, go across there. Just watch your numbers because these are slightly different sizes because because uh, you can see where it's a little tighter on this side. It's a little farther out that side for design purposes. So and then same thing here. This is asymmetrical. So make sure you get your bottom, line everything up with power side. So your power is going to be coming in through here and power is all going to live in here with your uh, power supply and everything. Uh, so just make sure everything lines up right. Uh, but that's pretty straightforward. So go ahead and build your box, get your frame going, and uh, and then go ahead and do the top box and get it going. Same thing. Um, the, the skin is in two pieces. So in order to stabilize that seam, we have this little added piece here. So a little different than what we've done. The jigs have some extenders that extend out. And then this this little piece right here, is just a little add-on piece to the main. So this main stick here is your main strength, and then this is a solid one piece all the way across the top. And then this little guy will just stick in there. You could rivet it on real quick, whatever. But that's just to keep this face seam stabilized. Um, but anyway, so you got all that there. Uh, your power supply is going to mount in the middle here. I'm imagining it's a one power supply thing. That should be fine. Uh, because these light these, these won't these these letters aren't going to take much, and you're just going to be doing basically I think a strip of LEDs per per power box here per that, so that should be fine. So anyway, so um, it's all going to live in here, kind of all that. The switch is a little different. Um, same little birdhouse we make, um, but it's going to have this little top plate. So when you go to rivet this together look for the additional top plate piece, this one right here. So when you rivet this to this, add this. Um, so that way you get something that looks like this. Um, the secret is, is we're gonna have a little 090 kick right here. That's gonna actually support the birdhouse as it sits on top of the ledge here. So you can see where this little guy kicks out. This is gonna sit on the opening and then it's gonna reach across and then you're just gonna frap frap it to the back here. So the switch box is going to float, essentially. Um, and then that gives you enough room to run your wires out. And then you can bring them up to the power supply. But that will keep our switch box nice and dry and happy. It will give us side access there. And uh, so, so again, don't forget to add on that when you make this. But otherwise, this is a standard switch box we make. Um, the face will just get a, 10, uh, a number 10 screw on the front there. So put that onto that, and that will be that. So there's no... Uh, there's no 1024 riv nuts on this one, but again, just watch out for that and make sure it gets put on the right way, and uh, that'll be uh, that'll be kicking there. Uh, so you'll weld in <clears throat> your stick here. This will be for power to come in, and then you'll be able to reach in through this hole to access this, and you'll be able to reach in through here and all through here to get into this little pocket. That'll be where primary lives. So you'll just bring primary up and in, and this will be where you'll access power. So once you get all of this framed together, um, you're going to go ahead and you have you have alignment holes here the, for for your uh, Clicos slash, and then you can you know lords it on real good, and then choose to shoot some rivets, or you can do some 1024 um, self tappers to give it some extra love. Same thing here. So you'll just bring it in and uh, just lords that bad boy right on, just bam bam. And then once you have that, then you can go ahead and once you know, once you have, you don't need access anymore, go ahead and skin it all up. Um, once it's skinned up, though, 
keep in mind that you're not going to have access to this top anymore other than just right through here. But so what you're going to want to do is when it comes time to wire this thing, do your blue uh, page wire leashes, but make them long enough to be able to blindly feed them and then use these holes to reach in through the bottom here. So these holes here will be your access to here. So thread these through long enough to be able to collect them and possibly bring them outside so you can work comfortably. And then I imagine you'll just kind of collect them and then make make leashes that go all the way out. And then you're going to make sure you want to make all your leashes come out long enough to work comfortably in this back pocket area. So, so essentially when you wire these up, make sure that you got plenty of leash to work with and feed it blind into the, and get into these holes here. So somebody can reach up and kind of grab and pull it. So same thing with the backside, you'll be kind of working blind there, but just bring it all down in and then you can work in the bottom box here with those trays. So once you have all that, you know, you can seal it up and then same thing here, go ahead and seal it up, put the faces on both sides. You'll be, you'll be good to go. Then comes the tray things. It's a hybrid of what we've done before. Some of the ones where we have the screws that slide in on both top and bottom. And then we have a little side screw here. Wasn't going to really work in this situation. So, um, I went ahead and made a hybrid of, you'll have two permanent screws. So I sent those over. We have those, those, uh, Torx head screws for the top. So the top on the bottom, the top one will slide in. And then the bottom is a conventional number 10. And then you flip that around for the top ones. So essentially I have two different types of bars here. So you can see where these are blue holes. That's a, that's one spacing. And then I have orange holes here for another. So, the spacing is off where you can't attach these in this spot. If these are the same, you know, if this, if this doesn't fit, it's because this is supposed to be on the top and the bottom. So you can see where access here is for the number tens that you can take on and off the inside here. There's no room. So this will be the bar that you slide in permanently. So on the face frames, you'll see you have two one six fives and you have two ovals right there. So you go ahead and shoot the Torx, permanent ones in there and then leave these open. And then, like I say, these will just flip top and bottom and the top ones will slide in this way and the bottom ones will slide in this way. But you put in your number 10 screws on the bottom and you put your number 10 screws in on the top, uh, depending on which one. So number 10 screws here, number 10 screws there. And then all in the middle here will be the slider ins. So that way, you know, we have no access. So if that makes sense, um, and like I say, just, just look for the slide in or look for the one. So all slide in ones go in the middle, all the screw in ones go on the outsides. So just put those on after you can rivet those on. That's fine. And then once that's all done and you go ahead and just, you know, like we do weld these up, these guys here, you're going to go, you'll have bend scribes here and here, but go ahead and clamp to this point. So you, you clamp up to here and bend and then do number one clamp and bend so you have a big C and then just feed it in reverse and use this as your template and then do a reverse bend bend so you have your flange like that so that'll be your LED tray and then you'll see where these holes line up with these holes here so yeah there's a lot going on in these little bars as you can see there's a lot of notches and holes and clearances and everything so these clearances allow you to rivet them on and then these clearances will allow you to these holes here will be how you hit these trays in so you kind of just tuck the trays in there and um, you'll have access right here so these are your tray mounting holes right here so that way you can pull these trays out and then um you know, access all your electrical. So, and again, so on these trays, you'll want to make sure that you have enough leash to work with the next tray. Or if you choose to run enough leash to run all the way here, that's up to you, whatever you think's easiest, or you give these like a two foot leash so you can pull this one out and collect it to this one and then jump it and then jump it. But essentially all of these wires need to make it into this area and have leashed enough to work comfortably out. So it's up to you how you want to wire all this, but this all needs to make it to here. And like I say, one power supply. So uh, should be good there. So yeah, you can see here, that's how the, the C channel will be on the face. Um, you'll have a little wire access here to feed things through. And you'll have your access hole here to feed things through that'll match up to that hole there up top. So that's where you come through there. 
Um, but anyways, uh, should be pretty straightforward. Um, just make sure you get all that. And like I say, these guys will go to first shop and then you can just put them in and slide them in. So they'll have a little, a little retainer will kind of sit there. So you'll probably just put these inside here first and then just slide them on and it should hold it in there. Okay. So there's everything you need there. So I think that should do it. Uh, if you have any questions. Oh uh, yeah. So the reverse channel letters, um, I think those are inch and a half because they're going to have to be as small as possible, but anything shallower, I think we won't have room. Um, so do the best you can with these little guys. And then again, these are going to be three eights and you're just going to use your number sixes and just go directly in. Uh, no room for tabs on these. So just do the best you can and do like we do on that. And then, uh, but these guys will just shoot on with number tens because you're not going to have access to studs or anything in the back. So when you go to mount these, just shoot number 10s. You can do a light test. I don't know if these want to be a half inch off or if these want to be three quarter or one inch. I don't know. You know, whatever you guys choose, think that looks good. Um, that might be a call for Jim to see if he likes it. So uh, anyway, um, that's that. So pretty straightforward there. But uh, all right. So I think that should do it. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up.